On this episode, we're gonna gap our pissing rings. So we got our engine block back from the machine shop. We got a nice clean deck surface cut into it, nice and flat. So next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean out each of the cylinder bores and then we're gonna fit our ring gaps. So what we'll do is we'll compress each of the rings into the specific cylinder bore, check its size with some feeler gauges and then adjust as needed. So here's our bore numbers that we measured previously. Uh, they're 3.4855 uh, at a max and 3.4855 four eight four nine at a minimum for a cylinder number one similarly for two three four five six so if we look at our application guide for our piston rigs and we go through and we look at our application we're doing high performance street strip we're mostly going to just be taking this car on the street or a little bit of track duty and so we come up with a board times 45 ten thousandths and a board times 50 ten thousandths and then our oil gap is has to have a minimum of 15 thousandths so we go through and we do the math and so uh, that gives us so roughly we're looking at for our top ring we are looking at about 15 thousandths to 16 thousandths of an inch. And the second ring, we are looking at about 17 thousandths of an inch. So then we grab our feeler gauges. And so we have feeler gauges here, 13 thousandths, 14 thousandths, 15 thousandths, and 16 thousandths, and then 17 thousandths. So for our top ring, we want to be in the 15 to 16 thousandths range. And for our second ring, we're going to be in the 17 thousandths range. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, put the rings into the bore, and then we're gonna check against the 13 and 14 thousandths, and then see how much material we need to take off to get the 15 to 16 thousandths for the top ring. And then similarly for the second ring, we'll go through and check on the 17 thousandths. So there seems to be lots of discussion on the internet on which way you should do your piston rings and which way they should be oriented. Um, well, that's important. You know, some people have said it doesn't matter in the end because those rings tend to rotate. Uh, your manufacturer's instructions will have directions on which way they think that the ring should be installed. Um, here you can see for these rings the way they are. They actually show the ring gaps in the thrust directions, uh, opposite, you know, per perpendicular to the, um, I guess, wrist pin center line. Uh, and then Nissan itself actually talks about it in a different way and they show the thrust direction, the pin direction and then offset about 45 degrees for doing the other top end gaps. I don't think it matters a lot. Um, I think there is a lot of discussion. I think the important thing is just to not line up your gaps. Um, and so as we're putting them into the cylinder bores, what we're going to do is we're going to offset the rings. And so here's the version that I think I'm going to use going forward. We're going to, if this is our cylinder, this is our uh, wrist pin direction, I guess. Wrist pin. So then our thrust direction is this way. So this will be the front of the motor. Um, and this is the back, of course, and then this is the side to side of the motor. We're gonna do the, the top ring in this location, and we're going to do the second ring in this location for gapping. And then for the oil rings, we're gonna try and put them in this way. So, oil, oil. Uh, and that way they're slightly offset from each other and they're different, and that should help make sure that, that they don't line up. That said, it may not matter in the end because uh, while the motor is running, apparently there's a tendency for the rings to rotate and so in the end they may end up aligning anyway. So all of this may be for naught, but uh, this is what the process we're gonna use for uh, setting up a ring. So top ring, second ring, oil ring. 
um, all offset from both the thrust direction and the wrist pin direction. So let's get started. So we have our piston ring here. I don't know if you can see that very well, but there's a mark on the top that indicates which way direction is up. This is the top ring. And so, like we said, we're gonna, here's the wrist pin direction. Here's the thrust direction. So we're gonna offset it by about 45 degrees um, back from the motor. And so we're just gonna slot that in. So you just put it down into the cylinder, squeeze her down in. Careful not to catch your glove like I did. And then we're just gonna grab the piston and we're going to use that to flatten it out in the bore and get it nice and flat and level. So that's in the bore. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our feeler gauges and we're going to see what size it is. Now again, we're looking for a 15,000 to 16,000 for the top ring. Um, we're gonna start a little bit smaller and see what the gap size is. So let's start with say uh, 12 thousandths and just see where we're at. Um, this should go straight through. Yep, this one goes straight through. So then we'll move up to 13 thousandths. So 13 thousandths is good. Straight through. So 14 thousandths, we'll check. Again, make sure that you have the ring level in the bore every time. So here you can see I just nicked it and pulled it up. So we're just gonna re-level it with our piston. There we go. And then you can see that here that 14 thousandths is just a little too tight. So we're going to have to remove a little bit of material from this ring. And so what we'll do is we'll pop the ring out and we will take it over to get it filed. So we're just gonna take a little bit of material off. So now we have our ring. We need to take a little bit of material off. So what we do is we have a nice fine file in, clamped tightly in our vise. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run the ring off along flat, parallel, nice and straight, and take a little bit of material off. You can buy specialized tools for doing this. Um, they're a little bit expensive. Uh, the pricier ones can actually tell you how much material you're taking off. Um, there's electric ones. Um, there's also a little hand crank one you can buy, but we're just gonna use the simple file method going forward. The important thing here is to make it sure it's really flat and level and that you're not beveling or changing the angle of the ring. So you want it nice, flat, level, and you wanna go slowly um, just take a minimum of material off and then recheck. It's better to sneak up on the ring gap than it is to shoot or overshoot it because you can't add material back. So before you get started, it's always a good idea to grab some old rings. So these are some old rings I had lying around from the last motor. Um, these rings here uh, were pretty much the standard rings that come in the Nissan motors. Uh, and so what I do is I just practice on these rings just practice making sure I can get it nice and flat and straight and practice removing a little bit of material each time and then I go and lay look and I see am I doing it nice and flat and straight uh, the other important thing is not to file the ring back and forth what you want to do is just one motion forward and the reason for that is most of the rings have a feature on the outside edge um, and you don't want to chip that feature or have that feature come out by dragging the ring from the inside to the out. So you always want to go outside in with the rings. And so what we'll do is we'll practice doing this and then we'll move over to our actual ring and we will do filing on this ring. So again, making sure the ring is nice and flat and level and you just quickly drag it over the surface of the file nice and flat and level. Checking to make sure that you're doing it nice and flat and level. So, again. So you just want to remove a little bit of material, not too much, and then you can see how flat and level that is on that ring there. Oh, let me 
you see if the camera can catch it? So there, try to get it nice and flat and level. And then we'll take it back to the cylinder and just recheck again. So bringing the ring back, again, top side up. We just slot it in. Approximately 45 degrees to the thrust in the wrist pin direction. And then we flatten it out with our piston into the bore, nice and level. And then we will take another measurement again. And so here we go, 14 thousandths again, run this through. And so again, it's still a little tight, so we need to remove a little bit more material. So go check it again. So we went back and forth a few times uh, from the file and the cylinder bore. So now just one last check. We think we're pretty close. And so this may take some time and you've got to have some patience. Um, so there we've got 15 thousandths and 16 thousandths. We have 15 thousandths goes between with a little drag. And then 16 thousandths has a lot of drag. So we're between 15 thousandths and 16 thousandths, which is exactly where we want to be on the piston ring gap. So we've got our ring gap set. Um, now we can pull this ring out. And we, what we want to check is we want to make sure there are no burrs where we filed. Um, and we want to just make sure there's nothing that's going to scratch or uh, hang up on the piston. And so what we'll do is we'll just very gently go over it with a little um, fine sandpaper and just make sure everything's fine. What you don't want to do is start filing the ends is out here or the edges inside and give it a chamfer. What that will do is it'll increase your ring gap and that will allow more blow by on your motor. So what you really want to do is make sure this is flat, but you just want to check and make sure there are no burrs on the ring. So after the filing that you've done. So that's the first ring gap set. And then you follow on down through the cylinders with the second rings and then the oil rings, making sure they fit specifications. So, so next up, we just got to go through and check all of the oil rings. So these have to be a minimum of 15 thousandths. So we're just going to run through, make sure they at least are at that minimum. Set Again, just set them in the cylinder as we expect to orientate them. So again, this is the pin direction, thrust direction. So we have the first ring here, second ring here, and then the oil ring we're going to put here and here. So this is the oil ring. Just put it down into the cylinder bore, nice and flat. And then we're just going to run our 15 thousandths through it and just check that that easily runs through. Yep, very easily runs through 15 thousandths. So we just go down the line and check all of the oil rings and uh, we should be good to go. So there you go. That's how you gap piston rings. So we've gone through and we've gapped all of our uh, combustion rings and we've double checked our oil rings. Uh, so next step would be to go through and weigh the ring sets and then get ready for balancing the piston assemblies. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.